last week, we talked about integrating the power of AI into your application. Eighty-two percent of mobile app developers are using AI wrong. Now, is that a real stat? No. That's quickly that we made up to help drive our point. If you're thinking that AI is just chatbots, you're not thinking big enough. Hi, I'm Michael, and I lead Marketplace at Flutterflow. And I'm Maggie, and I'm a solutions consultant at Flutterflow. Just less than a year ago, I was working at Google, supporting Google's developer tool stack. Now, to ship anything at a big tech company, it takes months, or quarters, or years, and I just wanted to ship things fast. Luckily, I stumbled across Flutterflow one weekend, and it was the beginning of the end for me. It was the beginning of the end for both of us, actually. Michael and I would stay up until 2 a.m. every night building apps in Flutterflow. We had taken what I had built in traditional iOS Swift development in three years and rebuilt it in basically three weeks in Flutterflow. I was a software engineer for Square at the time, and I remember thinking to myself, we could be building so much faster if we had just used this. Today, I help develop digital experiences for enterprise on Flutterflow. Now, AI is eating the world. No doubt, you use AI daily, whether consciously or subconsciously. And these models are really powerful, but they're only as good as the experiences we wrap around them. Our job as developers isn't just to toss AI into an app and call it a day. No, we need to create beautiful, intuitive experiences that make AI feel like magic. And let's be honest, a blank prompt box, not magic. Let's dive into a few examples. So I know we just bashed chatbots, and don't worry, we have other examples. Um, but they may just be the easiest way to get started with AI today. And by adding these three simple features, dynamic card components, audio transcription, and image context, you can make your chatbot way more dynamic and feature rich. So Michael and I live in Munich, Germany, which is awesome, except that we unfortunately don't speak German very well. Um, and I think our problem is we determined pretty early on that it would be faster and more enjoyable to just learn Flutterflow than actually sit down and learn German. <laughs> and so we built an app in Flutterflow that uses Gen AI Chat to help us navigate the German bureaucracy. Before we get into the features of the app, I want to go over how we handle supporting streaming structured outputs that can return partial JSON strings. OK, wait a second. What does that even mean? The best way to understand this is in this side by side. On the left, you see a simple string returned in the content field. OK, no problem. We can render that easily. But on the right, we show a structured output in JSON format. Why would we prefer this, which is clearly more complex? And the reason is structured outputs are your new best friend for dynamic card components. When you want to render structured data in Flutterflow, you need your API to return in a structured way. By simply specifying to the assistant that when we want to render an email card, we need a to email, subject, and text, not only is it guaranteed to be valid JSON, it's guaranteed to be valid JSON in the schema that we supply. But we also want to support streaming. Flutterflow has an easy to use callback for this called onMessage, during which we will simply concatenate each chunk returned. OK, but wait a second. Concatenating chunks of JSON together may create invalid or malformed JSON objects. Thankfully, with a little bit of custom code, we're able to attempt to complete each JSON object. However, we may not be able to complete a valid JSON object each time we receive a chunk. Luckily, in Flutterflow, we can just store a page state variable and store the last valid JSON completion we were able to make. OK, so let's walk through this. You can see we've received our first chunk here, but we can't yet determine what type of component to show. So we just show a loading component. OK, so now the next chunk comes in. We can see type, email card. Let's start to show a blank email card. Finally, we receive the next piece of data, and we can detect that there's a to email, and so we can start to render this to email address. Finally, the next chunk comes in. We can complete this, finish rendering that. And you can imagine how this would continue, um, and then we finish rendering the card. OK, so now that we have a way to stream structured responses, let's get to the fun part, designing how we will render that response. We simply map structured response outputs to parameters in our components and design five custom components to show, depending on the type of the structured response. OK, so now let's see a demo. Our elevator was broken recently, and so we use the native Flutterflow record audio action and pass that file to an API call to use generative AI to transcribe our voice into text to draft an email to our landlord about our broken elevator. 
After some more conversations, still using our audio transcription feature via the Whisper API, we discovered that we could claim a rent reduction, which is rendered in a different type of dynamic card. And naturally, we want to learn more. Our template supports dynamic suggestions based on the assistant's response with the option to edit. So I tap on one of those and the assistant summarizes and will even provide an AI-generated illustration. And because a picture is worth a thousand words, we also built in support for the user to upload their own images. Now, I bet you weren't expecting to see this. Um, and the perfect way to demo this is using this beautifully complicated heat pump and cooling system that's inside our apartment. So before Flutterflow, Michael and I would spend hours trying to decode this 296 page manual because this thing would somehow malfunction with every change in season. We also have this wild looking schematic in our apartment that supposedly explains how this thing works. I don't know about you guys, but I chose software engineering so I wouldn't have to deal with schematics like this one. <laughs> so let's test out how this works with our app. We can take a picture of our schematic, upload it to our app just using native Flutterflow actions, and ask it to explain to us how it works. Okay, great, so it responded with an explanation. Um, I'm still not sure I understand how this thing works, but I think that's more of my husband's problem to fix. <laughs> right, Michael? No. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> Maggie knows full well that I'm not a handyman, I'm just a coder, so we'll get back to something that I know, which is Flutterflow. Maggie and I love to travel the world with our two boys, and we've been to some really cool Airbnbs over the years. Uh, but recently, we stayed in one where we found out we weren't the only guests living there. There's a lizard up bar. He was there. Last scene here. Yeah, it's totally him. He's like moving. There he is. Maggie's gonna take the hanger and basically scare him. A little bit lower. But yes, there. What? Where is he? Okay. I think Paul is. So luckily, everyone lived, uh, but given that there were lots of critters during our stay, we thought that we might want to politely call this out in the review, and it had us thinking how we could have AI help us write the review. So we started by redesigning the Airbnb review flow. And to start, we use a rating bar where when you tap each star, you can see it changes the choice chips below. Um, that's really boring. You guys all know how to do that in two minutes. Where it gets really cool is that there's an autocomplete component here which will use AI to finish your sentences as you type. And to accept a suggestion, you simply tap tab or swipe across. Now, how does this work? This is a simple stack with a text field on top and light gray text underneath. And with every change of the text field, we fire a streaming API call to GPT-40 Mini with the existing text and a prompt with some guidance on how to complete it. And finally, we use the tab keyboard action or the gesture to texture actions to rewrite the contents of the text field to concatenate the existing value in the text field and what the API returned. But we can go a bit further. Sometimes we want AI to modify what we've already written. That's why we built dynamic modifiers. Here, I accidentally wrote some German and it comes up with a suggestion to translate it to English. That's perfect. And in this case, on every text change, we return ways to modify the text via an API, and we store that in a data type that we call modifier. And by simply changing this enum right here, we can automatically handle new ways to change the text. This could be used to correct grammar, to shorten it, make it funnier, or even translate it. And like I mentioned, it works really good for fixing grammar, specifically because we're only returning the deltas to be modified. We are not rewriting the whole original string. And modifiers are great too if we want to guide users towards writing more understandable or polite content. And in this case, we got a little carried away, so I'm happy that it has a suggestion at the bottom to make this a little bit more polite. Now, you might have noticed something here. <laughs> This is my favorite thing. It's a really cool animation going on. And in this case, let's see if we can expand the details of this. And you can see this animation in action with a lot of text. We'll go ahead and tap expand details. And here it's rewriting it. But what have we done? We've taken the string 
and we've split it into individual words, and we render each word within a wrap. And then we add, in that wrap, animation with a delay that's based on the index of the string. Setting this up in Flutterflow took about three minutes. And I don't really like what it did here, so we can just go ahead and tap to undo it. Perfect. This is ready to submit. Now we can use AI again. And this time, we're going to use it to summarize and enrich the content. And in this case, we're pulling out a key quote or some key highlights, uh, or maybe some lowlights, and we can render it right here. Now, whenever we integrate AI, it's best to follow four key steps. Step one, infer as much as we can based on the context and history and our users. Step number two, always present choices to the user and let them override it. Notice how in the case of this text field, you never have to accept the autocomplete text because at its core, it's still just a text box. And if we're using AI to validate inputs, make sure that it's non-blocking since we always trust the users to have the best context. Step number three, we summarize and enrich the content, but only when we have enough examples to be confident in the model's output. This is really helpful for sentiment analysis, bolding certain text, translating, tagging it, really whatever you want. Finally, step four, built in Flutterflow. Like we said, AI models are powerful, but they're only as good as the experiences that we wrap around them. And Flutterflow makes creating that experience possible in days, not weeks or months or years. And actually for you, this is possible in minutes, thanks to Marketplace. So try these templates out yourselves for free by cloning these templates on Marketplace. Thank, Thank you. you.